everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Will and in this video I want to talk to you guys about stock footage keywording, how I keyword my clips and sort of the science that goes on behind it. So I'm actually going to do this video in two parts. We're actually going to have a bit of a discussion beforehand when it comes to the theory behind keywording and then I'm actually going to do a sort of clip live if you like on my computer. I'm going to transit to uh, a screen setup so you guys can actually watch me do this in real time. I'm going to use a CSV file and a clip that I used in a recent uh, video that I won't actually be using as stock footage because it doesn't have any commercial value but it doesn't really matter in this particular case because we're going to be using it as a case example not as an actual clip that I would want to sell but it makes for a good conceptual shot all the same. So when it comes to keywording there are a couple of things that I feel are really really important. First and foremost is the number of keywords that you use. Now I believe that the minimum amount of keywords that you need on the mainstream agencies for video comes in at around sort of anywhere between six to 10 keywords, and that's fine. But ideally guys, you want to be aiming for more. A keyword in stock footage basically relates to how the clip is indexed in the search engine. So if you have a keyword, for example, that um, is used to describe an animal, you know, you could have, for, for example, mammal, um, you know, someone searching, for example, um, furry mammals, your shot will then be indexed into their search. If you don't have extended keywords, you're only going to be limiting yourself to those set keywords that you add. I believe on most of the agencies you can actually go up to 50. If like me you're using black box we can go up to 49 and that's simply because of the tracking system involved there which is fine. I tend to aim for about 45 keywords a shot. It leaves me a little wiggle room there if I need to actually put in a few extra once I'm going through the submission process and also it gives me a good range and a good sort of wide coverage in terms of what I'm actually you know, using for my shots. Now coming on to theory here, there are two ways that I like to approach keywording. The first one is from a very technical standpoint and the second one is from a conceptual standpoint. So for a nice and easy example here guys, let's use a kitten, okay? Let's say you have a really nice uh, tripod shot or a gliding shot of a kitten and uh, you need to keyword it. So to begin with, we approach this from a technical point of view. Keywords like cat, kitten, fur, small, claws, all of these kind of keywords are very technical keywords and that's a really good way to approach your shots initially. But then you might also have keywords that are conceptual in nature such as cute, uh, we've got things like parent, hungry, love, all of these kind of things that aren't necessarily visible in the shot but you know things that help to sort of convey emotion or conceptual ideas through the shot itself. So imagine you're a buyer for example and you are doing a corporate video for a charity that's to do, you know, it's charity where they take in stray cats. And you might need a shot of a cute kitten, but the kitten also needs to look sad. So, you know, because you want it, you want to get some donations, you want people to help the cat, and uh, you are going to be looking for that kind of content on the agencies where, you know, you might have a sad cat or a hungry cat, etc. And I find that the best way to approach keywording is to actually do a technical and conceptual mix. So what we'll do now is we'll actually go onto my computer, we'll jump in and actually take a look at a, a shot that I picked up a couple of days ago. I'm not going to be using it as a stock shot because I don't believe it has any real market value. If you saw my previous video on uh, how to get started with stock footage, you're going to understand why we're not going to be actually selling this clip because there's no real commercial value to it. Um, but we're going to jump in now, we're going to have a go at keywording it. I'm going to show you guys my workflow process when it comes to actually keywording that shot. So I've now switched over to my desktop computer. I am now using a different microphone, so I apologize if my voice sounds a bit weird. But I've just pulled up this quick clip, which uh, some of you, if you're familiar with my most recent video where I was going over um, tips for new people in terms of stock footage, etc. I gave this as an example of a shot where we've got a subject here which is the plant that isn't particularly uh, sought after in terms of commercial value but for the sake of this tutorial here we're just going to quickly go over this in terms of keywording and description. So as we can see it's just a simple shot, there's a little bit of slow motion camera shake there but nothing particularly uh, fancy but we're just going to go ahead now and do a description quickly so I could have something like uh, yellow daffodil which is the uh, name of this plant. Gently blowing in the breeze and there we go that's a nice little easy description there for us uh, we could say um, woodland setting as well just to sort of help set the scene 
Um, but in terms of actually getting a good description there, that, that fits the shot quite nicely since there's not very much movement or anything going on there. Um, if it was, if it was like a, you know, a drone shot, for example, I would put something like aerial view, uh, or you know, you could have a glide shot, etc., a tripod shot. Now coming over here to the keywording like we discussed earlier, we're now going to put in a bunch of different technical and conceptual keywords. So obviously to begin with, with technical, we've got things like daffodil, we've got yellow for the colour, we've got flower, uh, we've got stem there you can see in the background, we've got woodland, we've also got plant, bloom, blossom is another good one, nature, the colour green, and just carrying on up here at the top here so you can see what I'm typing out. Now moving on to more conceptual keywords, we've got things like love, spring, summer, life, earth, love, new. So now we've got a nice blend of technical and conceptual keywords here that help to describe the shot from a visual and conceptual format. And now that I've got a couple of keywords, while I could go on, I'm going to take this opportunity to quickly show you guys a really good tool by a website called microstockgroup.com. So if I come down here where it says search term and type in daffodil, it will then load 10 images for me to quickly take a look at and then I can select based on those image results what I wish to sort of get in terms of keywording. So for example, the isolated on white shots here, I may not be interested in, but these two shots quite here, they look quite good, that one down there. So I've got three shots now selected. If I just hit submit here, it then comes up with a whole bunch of different keywords that I could potentially use. So I've got things like garden, for example, lawn. Um, I could have may if I wanted to, horticultural, uh, meadow, sunlight. So I'm now also gonna take gardening and bright, and then I can come up here, select the keywords, do a quick copy, and paste straight into my CSV. And now I've got a nice range of keywords in there that cover the shot from both a technical and conceptual standpoint. So that just about wraps it up for this video, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know in the description of this video how you guys do your metadata. If you're sort of happy to share your ideas and your techniques, it'd be really cool to connect and actually learn from other people as well. I'll also leave some links in the description of this video to some useful resources if you guys wanna check that out. And until next time guys, I will see you in the next video.